Hi, I'm Ellen McCauley in Syracuse, New York. And one of the things I've really tried to do in session 12, for my own benefit, as well as the groups, is bring up topics that we've never quite talked about before. Now we talked about self-love, we talked about self-acceptance, but we've never really talked about self-compassion. We've talked the past two weeks about peace and the peace of Christ and the peace that we need to get away from the anxiety and the emotional eating. And I thought a very big obstacle in my life to that peace was that I did not treat myself with self-compassion. That I was there with that whip, with that should of list. Why didn't I turn away from the butter and sour cream on the mashed potato? I shouldn't have ate it. I should, should have, should have, should have. And this week I want to talk about gaining that peace through self-compassion and self-acceptance. And the materials that I have tonight are so powerful. In many cases, I want to read whole passages from them. Compassion and acceptance are forms of love. You know, you, a couple of people couldn't make it tonight because they had calling hours they had to go to. And they called me, and I, I said, I so get that. Because when my dad died in 1991, I still remember everyone who came I remember what they said. I remember feeling the love and the compassion. You know, and then my sister tells a story of someone that she thought was a very good friend who later went up to her and said, oh, I didn't make it. I was just so busy. I had a dinner party. I had this, I had that. And they went on and on and on about all the reasons they couldn't go. And there was no compassion. There was, you know, it would have been better if the friend said, I so wanted to be there. I love you. I'm so sorry your dad passed away. And not gotten into that other stuff. So she remembers, and I remember, the acts of compassion. And so often we don't give that compassion to ourselves. Because so often our self-worth is dependent on being perfect. If we're not perfect, then we beat ourselves up. You know, one of the things when you deal with yourself with self-compassion is that you start to love yourself and you say, I don't want to see myself suffer anymore. I love myself. I have such compassion that I don't want to suffer by dredging up the mistakes I've made in the past. I don't want to suffer by carrying around this excess weight and having to take high blood pressure medicine. So that it no longer becomes an effort to try to lose weight and keep it off. You're doing it because you care about yourself. And this desire for our own happiness, our caring, is what supports and fuels our change process. And this kind of change feels much, much different than change that's fueled by a sense of unworthiness, disgust, I hate myself, judgment, shame, and blame. Not only does compassion foster healing, it also fosters, fosters the deepest freedom and peace. Our worthiness and lovability are no longer tied to how good we are. So we can rest. We can feel enough. We can feel at peace now, not when we finally get ourselves together. I used to think, I'll be okay at 175. That was it, 175, 175. I will be great. You know, I'll probably win the lottery. I'll probably say to Bob, sorry, you know, Brad Pitt has finally called. <laughs> and I love you, but Brad, come on, Bob. And Bob will say, I understand it's Brad Pitt. I get it. No, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> but don't we do that? Don't, don't we? Bob, I'll be there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Mary Ellen right line. Oh, you want to go with Brad Pitt? I'll take Bob. I'll take Bob. Oh, sure. <laughs> We're going to talk later. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, enough said about that. But don't we do that? Don't we say, if I can pay off the house, everything will be all right. If I do this, if I stop making all these mistakes, if I could just be perfect, if I could just stop making all these stupid food choices, you get tired of it. And isn't that why you quit? Isn't that why you say, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired. 
I'm tired. I just want chocolate cake and paninis. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. If we have change out of love, I don't want to weigh 370 again because I don't want to carry around that weight. I don't want to think I'm the cause for extra medication, etc. I want the peace that comes, maybe not from being 175, but maybe from being in this journey with you all. And Mark said the most beautiful thing tonight, and I believe it with every bit of my being. We're here to lose weight, but we're more importantly here to help each other get to heaven. I am a better person than I was six years ago. Oh, I'm not perfect. And guess what? That's okay. I can have self-compassion for my lack of purpose, perfectness, and that's beautiful. And then it talks about self-compassion, about... Heal overeating through the power of relationship. And you know who that relationship is with? Ourselves. We can heal our overeating by being in a relationship with ourselves. We often think that it's a science. You eat less, you move more, you fix the behavior, you eat less junk food, less sugar, lose weight, exercise, and then you bribe yourself. Okay, I'm gonna when I lose 20 pounds, I'll buy all new clothes, or I'll put skinny photos of myself up there, and I'm gonna call myself a pig every time I have a donut. You pig, you pig, you pig. Doesn't that work great? Isn't that a real pick me upper? You know, oh, I'm a pig. The challenge with these behavioral approaches is that their success comes at a high cost. Oh, I can starve myself forever. Give me that drink. You tell me, you, you drink this drink for 30 days and you'll lose 40 pounds. I can drink it 30 days. I can do it. But guess what? Afterwards, I'm like, oh my gosh, where's the food? It's not natural. You beat yourself up. You have these behavioral approaches. I'm going to exercise two hours every day. You do it for a week and then you're laying on the couch going, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> the cost to your psyche, heart, and spirit is too much to bear. Food and weight become a dry, barren duty. I have to admit, there's a huge part of me that's still afraid of food, afraid of parties, afraid of binging at parties. Because this is what you do. I'm so good, I'm so good. It's a party. I don't want to have my life revolve around my relationship with food. I want to live my life. Food's there. I eat it. I don't beat myself up. What happens when you constantly beat yourself up is that the soul longs for freedom and starts acting out in messy, messy ways, like eating an entire <laughs> chocolate cake. You know, I'm suffering. I'm depriving myself. Give me that cake. We, we feel beaten up by self-criticisms. Our standards of behavior are so high that we can never get there. We're frustrated by our lack of progress. So we say, I should be thinner. I should have ate less last night. I should exercise more. I should be kinder to my coworker. I should be patient with my child. I should be a better Christian. Because isn't that what we do? We start with our weight. Why did I have that donut? I suck in every area of my life, and I might as well just kill myself. Because that's what we do. And our control, our the control we enact to be good, causes us to feel compulsive, anxious, and and all tight. Oh, I, I'm not going to eat that, I'm not going to eat that. And you're so nervous and you're just tense about it. And that approach does not work. We gain the weight back. We put aside our eating plan. Life gets messy. We stop exercising. Overeating is not healed through tricks, willpower, or even well-meaning attempts to eat healthier. It's definitely not healed through punishment, blaming, shaming, name-calling, and more. It's healed in a relationship with ourselves where we have self-acceptance, healthy food choices, because we want that. Kindness towards our bodies and more, and then we grow from there. Nothing grows without roots, and our relationship with ourselves is our root. And that's what always made me fat. I was fat not because I daydreamed about hot fudge sundaes and cookies and donuts and chips. I have a problem with my weight because I'm not well emotionally. And the only real help that I found is this group and the love of Jesus Christ. It's the relationship that you have with yourself, with food, your body, your humanity that allows you to heal the behavior, the overeating that's driving you nuts. To heal our overeating, we have to heal our relationship with ourselves. 
And I've known all of you, some for a shorter amount of time. And there's so many people in the group that have a very bad relationship with themselves. They really do. You say things to yourselves that you would never say to me. Like if I said to you right now, yeah, it was my sister's birthday, I had a piece of cake. Do you see it up and go, you pig? You, you loser, you're running this group and you, you hit cake? Can't you practice what you preach? Get out. Get out of this group. No, you're like, well, it's just your birthday, you know. I'm sure you got back on the saddle the next day. I'm sure you're going to try and keep it off. Isn't that what you'd say to me? Then why don't we say it to ourselves? And that's where we have trouble. We're going to stop right there, Bobby.